So I just love this part of the book where um, you give a quote and it's, I'd rather wear out than rust out. And I feel like that totally applies to me because I'm just starting out in the working world, in the professional world, and I just wanna take on everything and tackle every single challenge that there is. So how do I know what to focus on that's most important so that I can succeed at everything I do? Well, you, you learn to set your priorities and that's personal. Uh, it's been easy for me because to be honest, God's first and my family's second, my career's third. And I have been teased that, you know, I'm like the Energizer Bunny, that I'm always working. And, and I say to people that, uh, you know, you only have so many spring times in your life and you wanna do as much as you possibly can do in this world. And you're here to learn and you're here to love. And that kind of makes it simple, but I, I think that just um, realizing to do what you can do with what you have to work with and help other people. Look at everybody that's around you and just say, what can I do that would make a difference in this person's life? And realize that everybody's got a little visible sign on them. It says, make me feel important. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. And, and you're a very talented person. And allow yourself to use that passion and that energy. And you'll feel so much better about yourself when you accomplish something that makes a difference in somebody else's life. So congratulations for being that way. Oh, <laughs> you're too kind. <laughs> These are life's principles that the best way I think to learn something is to teach it. And I've been teaching. I've been a social worker and a teacher and I've been in broadcasting and then speaking and writing. And you know, speaking is the number one fear in the world. Right. Uh, according to David Wolinchinski that wrote the book of lists, I had dinner with him one night at Vanderbilt. And he said, you're a speaker. He said, that's the number one fear in the world. And I, I had to ask him, what's number two? He said, uh, death by fire. And I said, okay, <laughs> that's number three. And he said, death by cancer. I said, so people would rather burn to death and do what I do for a living. <laughs> so that kind of puts it in perspective. Because, yeah. And people say, do you get nervous? And well, it's sort of, but I heard a study that said out of your average audience, about 11% is not even listening. They, somebody <laughs> drug them in, they didn't want to go. And about 28% worried about something else. And about 30% interested, and the rest are having sexual fantasies. So <laughs> I figured everybody's going to have a good time no matter what I say. <laughs> so I just sort of enjoy it, you know, and kind of watch the ones that are having more fun than others. But uh, because it, it, is, it is fearful to, to be right. a speaker, but uh, you get over it after a while. Is it true what they say that it helps if you imagine the audience is naked? That's a sexual fantasy part. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. You know, I've never done that. Jennifer. Don't start it right now. What kind, of, what kind of groups are you <laughs> thinking I should be speaking to? Yeah. It's just what I've heard. Right. It always seemed odd to me. I know. I, no, I, I don't do that.